Hey everybody, hope you're good. Sorry it's been a while since I've done a video, a vlog, um, but just in the process of packing stuff and we applied for a house today so hopefully we will hear back in the next couple days to see if we have somewhere to live because we have to move out in a week. <laughs> um, and God just loves to test our faith because, um, and I'll actually be talking about this on this vlog, but you know, we, it's, we're, we're very quick to say, oh yeah, I trust God, I have faith, you know, but there, you don't really have it exercised. You don't have your trust exercised and you don't have your faith exercised until something does not go to plan or, uh, something doesn't turn out the way you thought it, it should or would. Um, <clears throat> and that's when really the rubber meets the road and God's saying, well, I thought you said you trusted me. You know, I thought you... You told me you trusted me and you tell other people you trust me and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, God likes to sometimes leave things to the last minute. So hopefully he won't. Hopefully he'll, you know, this place will be for us or, you know, if it's not, you know, so be it. But he'll have somewhere else for us. Um, so anyway, I am going to share on trust, um, which has kind of been a theme in my own personal life the last um, few weeks. Uh and hence moving house and not having house to move into. Um, so I'm just going to read from Proverbs 3. Um, actually, Pastor Johnny shared on this on Sunday at church, um, which I thought was kind of cool because, you know, it's something I've really been focusing on. And actually, I wrote a song about it, um, about this whole kind of, well, this first half of this chapter. Um, and, you know, not to blow my own trumpet, but I, I find myself singing my own song um, because I, you know, I just find it just so where, where I'm at right now. So anyway, at some point I'll upload the song and you can hear it. But anyway, um, so Proverbs 3, chapter 3. So this is, Proverbs is written by Solomon, so the son of David. Um, Solomon is the king who asked God, um, like God basically said, okay, Solomon, ask me for whatever you want. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Um, you know, and... I'm sure most people would ask for money or wealth or, you know, power or, you know, mansions or whatever. Um, but actually Solomon asked for wisdom because he recognized, you know, he was king. He was, I, I think he's, he was already king by this point and that he was, he was in charge of ruling a nation and, you know, no amount of money and wealth and power can help you rule a nation better. What you need is wisdom. And so that's what he asked for. And God said, well, because you've asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you wisdom. And not to mention, I'm going to give you, you know, riches and fame as well. And so he was probably one of the richest people that's ever lived on this planet. Um, and people would come from far and wide to hear his wisdom because he was just, you know, he would just get divine wisdom from God in, in situations and circumstances. So um, Proverbs, now he did go a bit crazy at the end of his life, unfortunately, kind of walked away from the Lord. But um, while he was still kind of in his right mind, he wrote Proverbs um, and he wrote it to his son. Um, I can't remember which son it was, but anyway, that's how it starts. Chapter three. Uh, and so he's writing to his son and he says, my son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of a life worth living and tranquility inward and outward and continuing through old age till death. These shall add to you. And this is where I'll kind of start. Let not mercy and kindness, shutting out all hatred and selfishness and truth forsake you. So let not mercy and kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. So shall you find favor, good understanding and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Lean on, trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord, and turn entirely away from evil. Entirely. Not kind of. Not dipping your toes. Entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews, and marrow and moistening to your bones. Hmm. So there's some actual physical healing qualities to walking away from evil to walking in God's righteousness, right? 
Um, <clears throat> and I'm just going to jump down. I'm not going to really talk about this much, but uh, verse 12, if you jump down to verse 12, or actually even verse 11, um, my son, do not despise or shrink from the chastening of the Lord, his correction by punishment or by subjection, subjection to suffering or trial. Neither be weary of or impatient about or loathe or abhor his re reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Um, and basically he's just saying, listen, you could, you're, you're going to end up being disciplined one of two ways. One, because you're rebelling and, you know, now this is, this is in terms of somebody who already knows God and who has had some kind of relationship with God. So if you start rebelling in your relationship with God and start saying, well, I'm going to start doing things my own way, um, one of two things will happen. Either God will punish you and correct you because he loves you and he wants you to see the error in your ways and to come back to him so that it prevents further problems in your life. Or two, he will discipline you and basically let give you the consequences of your decisions, right? Because anytime we choose to do things our own way apart from God, um, really it never turns out as good as it could have if we just listened to God. But anyways, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about truth and leaning and trusting in God. Um, yeah, so I'll just read that again. Um, <clears throat> verse 5, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, okay? And not re do not rely on your own insight or understanding. So what's, what's Solomon saying here? He says, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart, okay? So what he's saying is, this is how you ought to be. This is how you ought to behave and act and how you ought to think, is that you are, you've, you've read in, in God's word about his character, um, what he says about himself, that he is faithful, that he is loving, that he's just, that he's righteous, that he's merciful, gracious, um, and you're trusting his character, right? That's why we trust him. Not only that, but because we've seen his goodness, we've seen and experienced his salvation, his faithfulness. Um, and that is why we trust in him. Remember ages ago in another vlog, I talked about how Israel, God delivered them from Egypt when they were in bondage to Egypt for 400 years. He led them out of Egypt away from Pharaoh. He led them to the Red Sea, part of the Red Sea for them. They walked through the floor bed of the Red Sea and then he closed the waters back over the Egyptian army, killed them all. Um, they complained about, you know, they complained after that, that, oh, we want to go back to Egypt because now we have no food and blah, blah, blah. So God's like, okay, uh, do you not realize that, you know, if I was going to kill you in the wilderness by starvation, I probably would have killed you ages ago by the Red Sea, just throwing you into the sea and killed you. Um, so he fed them with bread and manna, or manna and quail, and, you know, they kept complaining after that. Oh, we've no water. Oh, we've no this. Oh, we've, you know, uh. and God's like, do you not remember my faithfulness? Do you not remember how I've shown you and proven to you that I love you, that I'm going to take care of you, that I'm going to look after you? You just have to trust me. Um, you know, of course you're human. So you're, you're going to see these in a, see all these things in a human way and probably worry about this, which is why Jesus said, do not be anxious or worried about anything because you can't even help yourself. You can't even add an inch to your height or, you know, you can't even see what's in tomorrow. So don't even be worried or anxious. And that's why he said it, because he knew we would be. Um, but basically what Solomon's saying here is, listen, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Why? Because you can't even see into tomorrow. And he says, lean and lean not on your own insight or understanding, right? I mean... If you talk to a lot of scientists and atheists, they think they're like the smartest people on the planet, you know, because they have all this knowledge or people who have a lot of degrees or whatever. But really, human knowledge compared to the knowledge of God is just, I mean, it's so pathetic, it's not even worth mentioning. But basically, this is what Solomon is saying is, listen, God, who knows the beginning from the end, who was there, who, who right now is existing outside of time, um, is saying, listen, just trust me rely on me. Don't look at how your circumstances, how things look. Why? Because you already make bad enough decisions on your own, you know, so don't trust in yourself. Don't, don't go by what you can see, by what you can understand in your mind, because I'm so far beyond that. Um, and it, you know, 
and trust in me, trust that I'm good and that my word is true and that I am who I say I am. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge him and he will direct your direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil, right? So acknowledge him. You know, every morning we should say, God, I acknowledge you as king, as God, as my Lord and Savior. Um, you know, that you are awesome and worthy and I'm, you know, saved by your grace. Um, and so in all things, we pray about decisions in our lives. You know, if we're, if we're thinking, uh, you know, should I apply for this job or, you know, I'm waiting on a house or what about this and what about that? We simply bring it to the Lord in prayer, right? That's, that's what the Bible teaches. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. So what do we do? What do, what, do, what does this practically look like for us? When, when it says trust and rely on the Lord, it means come to the Lord. Like Paul says, bring your prayers and, and petitions to the Lord, right? So we pray about these things. We pray about all these concerns that we have and decisions that we're trying to make and, you know, and, and, and how we're trying to figure out and discern God's will. And so we just come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I trust you where I'm at. I'm going to choose to trust you because it is a choice, right? It's not inherently there. You choose to trust people. You choose to trust whoever, right? It's, you don't just, it's not automatically there because it does need to be earned. Um, but God is far beyond earned our trust. Um, so we can trust him. He's the only person on this planet that we can trust a hundred percent. That's it, bottom line. So he's worthy of our trust. And so what it is, is every day we just come to him in prayer and we say, Lord, I'm going to choose to trust you today, no matter what things look like, no matter how, how much my mind is racing about this. And oh, what if that happens? What if this happens? I trust that you are going to, your kingdom is going to come and your will is going to be done in my life and on this earth as it is in heaven, right? And we pray this out. It's good to speak it out. It's good to pray it out loud because then what it does is, you know, it, it not only acknowledges by your mouth that you're trusting God, but the enemy hears it, you know, your ears are hearing it. So you're affirming that word that's come from your heart and you're affirming it out loud and you're speaking it out, which is powerful. And the enemy's hearing it. Now he may not like it. He might <laughs> try and torture you even more, but Praise God, we can overcome, right? So, and what we do is sometimes we have to continually keep trusting and continually lay things down, right? You know, like us looking for a house. I pray about it every day. I'm like, Lord, I'm trusting you that you you have the right house for us, not my dream house because, you know, I don't believe I'll have my dream house until I'm able to build my own house. But it will be the right house that is perfect for us, and I believe He has it. And I trust him, which is why I've got, I've had so much peace about it and I'm not worried, even though we have a week left, I'm not worried about it, you know, but sometimes we just have to keep, when we do get worried about it, we have to keep giving it back to him and saying, okay, Lord, no matter how I feel, no matter what I'm thinking, I'm going to trust you because you've earned my trust. Like, and besides who, who am I to, you know, that you should have to earn my trust really, you know, so we lean not on our own understanding because our own understanding is finite, which means it's you know, we can only see and understand things of this mortal world and things of, you know, things that we can see and understand. <clears throat> I can't understand everything there is to understand. God can. So by rights, I should be trusting him and relying on him totally because I believe he loves me and I believe that he has and wants the best for me. So as I, ah, shoot, that was the other thing I was going to talk about. Um, maybe I'll do two videos. So as I you know, remind myself that God is all seeing, all knowing, sovereign. I have submitted my life to him, which means he has authority over my life. He has control over my life because I've chosen to give it to him. Then I trust him. That's why we can trust him because he's good. And because he's worthy of our trust out of anybody we will ever meet or know or read about. He is worthy of our trust. That's why we trust in him and we don't rely on what we know, what we can see, what we can understand, because gosh, that's uh, scary. But yeah, so he's worthy of our trust. Anyways, I'll finish the next one in the next vlog, what I was going to say. Yeah. So see you later.